NFL fans, and welcome to another edition of the FAU Baseball Insider. I'm your host, Jared Smith. My guest, as always, head coach of the FAU Baseball Program, John McCormick. Coach, another week, another couple of victories in conference play for FAU. Two out of three over UALO over the weekend. Tell me how the boys play against the Trojans. Oh, very well. Uh, the Friday night kind of got away from us a little bit. We knew Champion was a very good pitcher, and he certainly did a nice job, and, and uh, we didn't pitch very well. I think we gave up 15 runs and about 16 hits or 14 hits. Um, uh, but we came back Saturday, and, and Mike Gibson pitched an absolute gem, and then Kevin Alexander followed it up on Sunday with another gem. Let's talk more about Mike Gibson. He really has been the stopper for this team all season long. He's 4-0. His ERA is under 2. And Is that something that you expected from coming into the season, or is this kind of above expectations? I've expected that from Mike since the day I saw him pitch as a junior in high school. I always thought that he was – you know, mature beyond his years on the mound. He had a ton of mound time, especially at a young age, uh, in big situations in his high school. I think he's the all-time winningest pitcher in Palm Beach County history. You might want to look that up, but I think he is. Um, and at times, his first two years, he's shown bits and pieces of that. Some some games like you just saw, he would roll out six, seven innings of that. But Mike has really matured and is now able to put those those innings back to back and back to back weeks. Offensively, double digit runs on Saturday and Sunday, and a lot of that has been spearheaded by the new leadoff man, Raymond Church. You moved him into that leadoff spot. He's been great. His on base percentage is over 480 and, and he got four hits on Sunday. Talk about your decision making moving him into that top spot of the order. Well I, I know we talked about it a little bit before. Going into the season it was kind of a toss up between him and Mike Albadejo and and um you know, Abby's a little bit more proficient in the short game, so he said, ah, that kind of gave him the nod. Um, but the one thing that Church does is he takes so many pitches, and he's he has a lot of walks in that leadoff spot. If not, I would venture to say, if you look at his at-bats, he's always into the four, five, six pitch, you know, at-bat and comes up with, you know, a, a positive thing. And he's got an on-base percentage of 480. And Chase Ferguson, who hits behind him most games, has got an on-base percentage of 500. So when those two guys get on, you got a shot to score some runs. Let's go to this week. Two games against Cornell in the midweek, and then the Owls will head to Lafayette to take on a very talented Louisiana Lafayette team over the weekend for their second road conference series. First, let's talk about the Big Red. What do you expect from them this week in the midweek series? Well, I'm glad we're not playing their basketball team. <laughs> very uh, true, very true. Uh, you know, they, they finished uh, mid in the pack last year uh, in the Ivy League uh, with a lot of young guys. So all those guys are back. Um, you know, when you get those guys, you know, going from sophomores to juniors or juniors to seniors, they're always dangerous teams because they got a lot of uh, uh, at-bats and a lot of innings under their belt. They're going to play hard. They're going to be scrappy. Um, we just got to take care of business in terms of just pitch, play defense, and swing the bat when we know. And, um, you know, we'd like to use these two games. Of course, you know, come out ahead on top and get a win, but we also need to get some guys some work. The bullpen on Saturday and Sunday didn't pitch at all, you know. Um, uh, you know, that one game that Mike threw on Saturday, it was relatively close up until the seventh. And then he kind of came to me in the eighth and said, hey, I want to finish this thing out. And his pitch count was low, and you know, I thought he deserved it, so we gave him an opportunity. And then, of course, the 10-run rule came, in, came up in the Saturday game, or the Sunday game, and we weren't able to get any bullpen guys. So we got to get some guys some work. So, um, you know, those pitchers, it's, it's, it's important. The toughest part of baseball is that bullpen. You know, sometimes you got to pull off the throttle to give those guys some rest out in the bullpen, and then sometimes you got to get them in games even when it might not call for it because they need to pitch. Speaking of the pitching staff, a shakeup to the rotation this weekend. It's going to be Ryan Garten getting the start on Friday for Taylor Evers. Garten's been absolutely brilliant in his first couple of relief outings, especially filling in for Taylor Evers when, when Evers kind of struggled. What do you expect from Ryan this weekend? Well, I, he just needs to do what he's been doing in relief. Um, you know, the one thing Ryan does uh, more so than a lot of guys in this staff is he has strikeout. You know, he can strike guys out. Um, Mike certainly can. Some other guys, it's you know, you're, you're creating contact. Um, uh, what we're going to do is, is Taylor Everest only threw about 25 or 30 pitches on Friday night, so he's going to start tonight and pitch probably get to 40 pitches, um, and then Alvarez will go tomorrow, and then Garten will start on Friday and Alvarez a spot, and then Gibson and Alexander will stay the same. But Ryan has been good, and, and you know the one thing about Ryan is very durable. You know He can throw a lot of pitches. He's physically put together very well. Um, and, and it wasn't so much of, you know, it wasn't so much that 
we had to get Taylor out of there. I don't want people to think that. It was we have an opportunity tonight to get him some some more innings and at home and you know maybe turn the corner with some of the mechanics and confidence and you know get him going in the right direction. First trip to Louisiana, first of three trips of Louisiana. We'll go to New Orleans in a couple weeks and then later in April we'll go to ULM. But Louisiana Lafayette's first on the Cajun docket. Now the Ragin' Cajuns have a very solid pitching staff and it'll be Osborne, the Sunbelt Pitcher of the Week, starting game one on Friday night. What do you expect from that Ragin' Cajun team in the second Sunbelt Road Series for the Owls this year? Well, anytime you go to Lafayette, it's a tough place to play. It's probably one of the secrets in college baseball in terms of a great college baseball atmosphere. They do a fantastic job and you know they're good to opponents um, and then they're rough on opponents but it's all in good fun. They're, they're very good, they're very knowledgeable baseball fans. Uh, I've always enjoyed playing there. Uh, Osborne is good. You know we, we had beat him last year and um, you know his numbers are very similar to Gibson's in terms of ERA and uh, innings and hits and strikeouts. Uh, so it's going to be a you know typical Friday night you know, we saw the the, the, the uh, Arkansas Little Rocks Friday night guy and and um, uh, um, Troy's Friday night guy and of course our Friday night guy. So that's 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 anywhere in baseball those Friday night guys. And but but you know I know that they're an aggressive team in terms of they like to run um, and they just put turf in. So I'm certainly that helps to the running game. Uh, it, it'll be interesting. It's this is your first time there. I take it. Yeah. <laughs> You'll I've been in Lafayette for basketball, but never for baseball. Yeah, you'll enjoy it. It's um, it's certainly it's certainly an experience, and they certainly do a lot of things very well for the fans. All right, we got all the baseball stuff out of the way. Now it's time to get to our favorite topic, the NCAA tournament. You had a tough weekend. Kansas is gone. Your championship pick, Villanova, is gone. You said you like West Virginia. Are you going to jump on now uh, Bobby Huggins' bandwagon, or are you going to go some other team? Um, no, I'm going to stick with them. I I, I, I I was Villanova. Now I went to uh, <laughs> now I went to West Virginia. It's just, you know, it's so fabulous to watch and, and you know, to see uh, uh, Cornell, yeah. you know, to make it to the Sweet 16 is is awesome in Northern Iowa, right? Yeah, Northern you know. Iowa beat Kansas and top, top seed in the whole tournament. You know, um, and that's that's the one thing that, that's somewhat different than in anything that's in, in anything in sport because it's one and out. You know, in the NBA, you got a three or five game, you got a five or seven game series. In baseball, you got a three, five or seven game series in the playoffs. In the World Series, it's seven games. So you have a rough game, you bounce back, you regroup. But in in that basketball, you got to be six for six. You know, um, but it's just as I've said a ton, and probably the people out there are sick of hearing it. I just love watching the competition, and you know, people that these kids, young men, kids, if you will. Uh, step up and make these unbelievable shots and with with the passion that they play and how they enjoy their sport and you know it's kind of like I get to watch our guys play and that's how I feel about our team and then get to watch it at night so it certainly is a uh, a fun thing to watch. Now, how's your team doing? My my team. Well, I, I like Syracuse. I, I think Syracuse has you know all the tools to make it. They've got Bayheim, who's an, an experienced coach. They got the two three zone, which is tough. So I've been sticking with Syracuse since about mid December, and I'm gonna ride them until they let me down. So we'll yeah. see how it happens. It'll be interesting. I know um, Michigan State took a yeah, you know a that was a that was a great game, and but they lost their best player. Yep. Um, uh, so I you know if if you're I think if 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 you're one of the favorites. Kentucky or maybe Duke, are you breathing a sigh of relief that maybe some of those other guys are knocked out on the other side? Yeah, you know, like sometimes it's the law of averages. Like you, you, you don't expect that all four number one seeds yeah. are not going to make the Final Four. You got to think that there's going to be at least one yeah. or probably two number one seeds. So now that one of them is gone, I'm sure the other team's kind of breathing a sigh of relief. But you know what? It's March Madness. Anything can happen. Well, that's true. That the the uh, you know it could be in April, but it's madness. Yeah. You know. Uh, but now I just think it just shows that. The, the committee, the seedings don't, you know, if you're a 6 or a 9 or a 13 or an 11, I don't think it matters at this point. The way college basketball has evolved and, you know, there's so many schools doing a great job in, in basketball and athletics in general uh, that it's, it, it, I don't think it matters if you're, you know, 6 or, you know, it's not like baseball where you, if you're the lower seed, you get a home game. You know, you you know, you get the last at bat in the bottom of the ninth. It doesn't matter in basketball. All right, the Owls will try to knock off one of those Sweet 16 teams, Cornell, this week, and then they'll head to Lafayette for a weekend series against the Raging Canyons. For my guest here on the FIU Baseball Insider, John McCormick, I'm Jared Smith. We'll see you at the ballpark. Thank you.